Ah, welcome back my gardening friends. Well, back to the polytunnel rebuild. Uh, if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen the previous parts of this uh, build, then pop uh, across uh, in the cards there uh, or in my playlist and watch it start to finish. And this video will be uh, at the end of uh, that little series. But we've gone through various stages. I started this in the new year, and the last time we had a look, we was building the uh, side panels on the other side. I've replicated these. Oh, we've had a lot of rain. This one might be a bit tight. Uh, that now exposes the environment. Cracking idea from uh, Alan at Alan's allotment. And another big thank you uh, to Tony at A Little Farmer's Farm for sharing his uh, trampoline poop tent build. I picked up on his mistakes and tried not to replicate them in mine. So uh, we'll take a little walk round and have a look and it won't be long now before we actually get, uh, get the cover on. This is uh, a double skinned, you can see these battens here. I'll try and explain that as we go through. It took a lot longer than I thought, but a thank you to Chris at Exploring Nature Together. That's Chris at Exploring Nature Together for all her help in keeping me motivated. Because sometimes with everything that's going on in our, on in our lives, it can be uh, a struggle. So let's have a quick look round before I bore you to tears. So basically we started off by getting these uh, road curbs in and uh, underneath there you can see the screws that hold the wood on top of the concrete so that it doesn't draw uh, the moisture out of that. Uh, we built the structure around and then uh, the idea came from uh, Alan and uh, that's got to be better than opening windows and it is quite a, a nice area probably half the area again which uh, will allow a, a little bit of uh, air obviously we've got air coming through there as well air coming through uh, the bottom of that and eventually when we get more wood chips i can fill this up we've got all this back done we use the uh Battens that I was going to use for the worktops, the tables, trellising, whatever you want to call it. And uh, realistically, I've uh, <laughs> I've got nothing left now. Well, you'll see uh, see coming on. Um, how did we create this? Well, I've got a scaffold board there, and that scaffold plank across here helped me uh, sort all uh, this out. So, if you remember, we had two uprights. I've uh, got the width there, replicated it there, uh, cut the timber off slightly lower than that so when the, sh the main top sheet goes over we've got something to uh, attach to. Uh, yes that batten there is going to be sat there uh, but the window will open outwards. It just gives the rigidity, you know what I'm trying to say, uh, so that the tunnel doesn't uh, move about too much. Uh, these are the polycarbonate sheets that we got that were shaded on one side and uh, that's south facing so uh, that may help a little bit with the uh, the, the sun but uh, overall it looks uh, looks quite nice and uh, those battens we've joined a little block of wood there but everything is really nice and tight so all these bed slats that we're going to use uh, for all the, the workbenches all the way along have uh, literally now uh, been all used up. So I run that piece of wood across there before I put the batten on top of there to, uh, to cover that up. So on the outside it looks aesthetically uh, pleasing and uh, ensured that when we bring the cover around when these battens are all taken off I'll show you that before we leave today uh, that to when I staple it down and then I can put those on to secure the plastic in place 
we've used longer coach bolts to create a gap so there'll be a gap between there and there when we put the cover on the inside using the blue pipe attached to that to create a nice curve instead of the plastic being there and then straight to there I think it'll look a lot better inside the tunnel and we have the options of creating uh, windows here we've still got a couple of sheets of polycarbonate left but uh, a big thank you to Carl at Philipstown Allotments who sent me uh, the uh, green polytunnel cover don't know how long it'll last but that'll give me time to cut and hack at it uh, before I buy the expensive uh, plastic and again anybody that's bought any plastic uh, any good companies uh, to deal with please and the uh, hot tape which goes on the the metalwork to stop the plastic from melting uh, these have all been sprayed and uh, pretty well not much rust uh, coming through uh, I've got a little bit of spraying to do before I actually put the tunnel on cover on you see there it just uh, it'll make it look uh, look pretty this frame has been here a long time so basically this frame was way down here so it's been sitting in the dirt and uh, this will give me absolutely plenty of room now like I said I used all the battens up so I've used some screws just to hold this in and I think that looks a lot more pleasing to the eye than these uh, these bits of wood here uh, what do you think I think I might take those out and put the screws in it just looks a lot better like this I think nothing square nothing straight <laughs> um, I was pulling and tugging at the polytunnel to try and uh, get it to nice uh, uh, to stop it from uh, waving around and the because the sheets are square uh, it, it can't go nowhere so it's just the uh, the middle bit that uh, I still may have issues will with but we'll see what happens when we put the cover on it's still kinking out in the middle there a little bit but overall it's not uh, it's not moving very far now so uh, hopefully that uh, will be good I won't be taking these battens off because when we put the skin on it'll come over here because uh, I want the water to run in the uh, the guttering which you've got sitting over there and of course all this is temporary for a couple of years until the new cover comes but I can learn uh, learn from my uh, my mistakes as we go a lot of this recent stuff was a, 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 the, my latest skip find that we did show. That piece there was a lot wider. Now that is slightly less than the width of the door behind me, but it filled that gap up nicely. And then, so basically all I've done, I don't like walking around with you guys, but I lay these polycarbonate sheets flat onto the barrels behind and the parsnip beds, butted up, found the center butted these two up then got these two panels and lay them flat and put that one there and that's how we've uh, we've got just a nice generous gap to uh, pop the plastic let's have a look on the other side there is a lot of mismatch wood here uh, we've got the wood, tantalized wood that we bought then the bed laths uh, more tantalized wood the last strip that we've got left uh, some different Let's just send in the uh, picture a bit foggy there, but we've got all sorts of different uh, different timbers. But uh, who's bothered once they've all uh, matched into each other? And uh, that plank and those water barrels there have helped out immensely in uh, getting to uh, the uh, higher spots. I'll just undo some of the these on the other side just to show you how we're going to attach the plastic when we decide to do it so now i've exposed that you can see that uh, the polythene will come over and uh, we'll be able to put the, all these battens on 
uh, I've taken uh, those off there we shan't have nothing here but obviously when the plastic comes down here I need to attach it to there so that will be hidden away and uh, there's that bit that we've hidden the upright post has been cut to sit over that then we've put a batten uh, in between and what I did find really useful and a good tip is to use uh, an offcut just happens to, to be this but you can actually put this uh, in between the wood up here to ensure we get uh, this bit right and as you can see there we've screwed that through to there that just needs uh, taken in a little bit more but uh, yeah I found that uh, quite useful we've got this bit left for the window at the front these are some of the uh, off cuts uh, little bits of triangle that's probably still a useful piece uh, so is that one and then we've got all sorts of uh, bits here and bits of wood that we can uh, burn on the open uh, brazier uh, in the winter months so this is what we've got left uh, and this is um, a lot thinner which might suit the windows better than the uh, really thick stuff uh, if I can get two windows out of that uh, for the end windows uh, that's what I shall do and then we've got uh, another three smaller pieces that may suit uh, the side uh, windows uh, if I decide to uh, create them but there's plenty of time to get more polycarbonate so overall it looks aesthetically pleasing and uh, it'll look totally different when uh, the cover's on and over the summer and autumn I'll see if I can get it double skinned if not it won't really matter let's just get planting that's all that's left of the very thin uh, slat so we've got some scope to make uh, some uh, benches within the uh, tunnel my recycled uh, wood store <laughs> is completely di diminished <laughs> we've got those we can use for the what well, same as well but those bits up there are a little bit uh, thick there's the pl blue plastic pipe to create uh, an internal tunnel so uh, we'll have some rebar along there and then we'll uh, work it around and uh, if it gets too hot I can always take it back out again in anticipation that this cover will be on very soon I've been mixing more of my uh, homemade compost that's the compost from out of uh, the bin uh, the remaining of the three-year-old wood chips some soil that we dug a hole over there uh, these are the uh, leaf mold um, rejects the bits with twigs in adding those and I've been filling my uh, 56 uh, litre pots I think they're 56 those pots anyway I think I need about nine so uh, ooh, one hiding around the corner and uh, I've been using uh, some of the uh, found compost so at least that area will be clear but I've still got all this compost to uh, add up uh, to add to my uh, my list so up to there I've used some more but we're nearly on 20,000 litres of found uh, compost that the uh, cannabis growers dump unscrupulously and we did show you in a previous video we found uh, another six bags there probably 25 litre pots good morning mr robin Shh. Uh, anything that i've got left after i fill my containers i can use some of this some more wood chips from the path if needed you can see the areas where i uh, dump all my uh, material the remaining material out of here once we fill the pallet collar beds this is my 12 month this is all the material i home my homemade compost mix that goes into containers gets dumped into here so it's uh, still full of nutrients uh, manure and also uh, i do need to use uh, the uh, the wood chips up come on get a grip the leaf mold uh, so that i can 
top up these beds once I've had enough of purple sprouting broccoli. This bed has sunk as you would expect. Excuse me. So I can get all my uh, remaining uh, uh, brassicas out. They're not suffering too much at the moment but definitely need to take another harvest off the uh, square foot garden. Um, I've took a chance and bought some of my uh, tomatoes out and yes I've probably spelt cherries right but I know what it means. And uh, I'll be showing you an ingenious way of watering. Now normally I climb up here life and death to uh, use the watering can i'm going to share with you what i've uh, designed later on in the year probably fairly soon guys you know me can't keep nothing to myself and a few more finds i've got three watering cans just happens that, that watering can is very similar to mine but the bar gum the top's really tight there was a bag of compost and uh, we've got uh, two tubs of um, Timber care. Hopefully, it's not been frosted, but it might help with some of the uh, woodwork around my allotment. Especially when you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> Look at the shed, guys. <laughs> oh dear, dear. Oh dearie, dearie me. Oh, yeah, there's my cabbages, guys. I forgot all about them. Look, it's shrunk to nothing and it's even started to uh, try and grow. Uh, unfortunately inedible but great compost material <laughs> oh dear dear I am going to try and calculate how much this polytunnels cost me and uh, I've used a lot of screws I use decking screws because you can get them out in the future uh, well worth the uh, extra money uh, on the end screens you'll get the playlist for this polytunnel build and a few other things thrown in as well and uh, I'm sure my tomatoes will love the uh, extra space and uh, when I've got time the rainwater gravity gravity rainwater guttering system will be replicated here and then we'll be able to uh, get these out another year and replicate it on this side and I will be using this as a hotbed so all the material out of that will be going onto the beds because that's cracking stuff as well and we'll be filling it full of manure and grass cuttings etc to get the temperature up and hopefully assist um, the heater heating system i'll have in here especially when we've got the double skinned um, tunnel i know it's going to be high but as long as i can keep it above freezing uh, hopefully i'll be able to grow things uh, throughout the year with this double skinned polytunnel and uh, be reasonably self-sufficient with some vegetables. Happy gardening to you all. Till next time, my friends. Ta-ra for now. after your soil and the soil will look after you.